Hi, Tamar. Welcome again to the Business Standard Banking Show. I was uh, reading your very interesting column you've written on Credila's success and you've talked about the whole edtech loan sector, which is very interesting, very complex. And you've talked about how NPAs are on the rise in this sector. Now, can you put in context for us, what is it that has made Credila a success and what are the unique challenges of this particular sector? Yeah, Credila is very different from others. As you rightly said, the NPA in the sector, I mean, you talk about banks and non-banks all put together. It's slightly dated number, but that's the available number, I know, above seven percent. But Credila, uh, it's all alone. Even during the COVID time, uh, it never touched one percent. Now, what's the difference uh, between Credila and the rest of the sector? Uh, Credila is very different. You know, it's it's actually modeled on uh, on, on the largest uh, education lender in the USA. It's called Sally Mae. Uh, that's it. So here, typically, if you find that Indian banks particularly, I mean, how they give the education loan, of course, there is this management, uh, underwriting, etc. there. Uh, but so once I'm going overseas uh, for a study or even within India, going for higher studies or technical studies and all, I do apply for it. And um, I get the loan or I don't get the loan. But here is credit um, uh, which is something very different, you know, it, it if the entire appraisal process is very different. It's it it weighs so many things, you know, where, because there is so many variables, um, like my own personal caliber. Uh, how is the course? Uh, once I get into the course and then I complete, what are the possibilities of job getting? What would be the salary uh, in my new job? So on and so forth. So. So all these uh, factors have, uh, you know, have been considered by Cadilla. And then there is no limit to what extent uh, one can get the loan. And this home, this loan is home delivered. So it's it's very different from others. And it's one, uh, one relevant point, what I'm saying is uh, there's an enormous possibility uh, in this particular segment to go. So moving on to uh, something else that has been making news uh, is the credit card dues. Credit card dues on the rise. Default is on the rise and we've had an RBI which has been cautioning banks about the retail lending as well. So how do you see this trend evolving and how wary do you think banks need to be about uh, these dues and defaults? Yes, to one um, data point I would like to um, I would like to highlight is this in India, the what's the credit card penetration? I know can you guess it's 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 just four point six two percent. 4.62% of Indians have credit card. So what's the comparative uh, figure in Canada? It's 82.74%. In Israel, is 79.05%. So ours is very, very low penetration. And in Pakistan and neighboring Pakistan and Bangladesh is even lower. That's uh, one story. Other story is what you were really saying is this. Yes, uh, in the post-COVID world, we were seeing, I don't want to burden you with more data, that credit card... Um, uh, um, dues are are now the hip is getting more. I mean, it's there's a swell in the credit card dues. Um, this is the general story because you know people losing jobs um, and everything else that has happened in the in the post COVID world. Um, is there any sense of where is the regulator is a little worried about um, this happening? Yes, indeed, that we have seen the newspaper reports. And do we need to, does the bank need to do certain kind of soul searching, uh, particularly in the, uh, as far as the retail loan is concerned, what's going wrong? Yes, probably. As we speak, we find that um, uh, there are certain cracks in the, in the, in the retail lending. You need not be worried terribly, but yes, there are uh, certain kind of, you know, signs are there uh, that things are not absolutely hunky dory in the retail sector. Talking of the things that are not all hunky dory, uh, the MPC minutes were out, and we have seen some divergent views there as well. Uh, what is the key message in the MPC meeting? Well, uh, yes, of course, there are there are not that uh, every decision is not exactly unanimous. Every decision means there are two key decisions. One is that uh, pressing the pause button, and the saying second is particularly when the uh, there is no unanimity is the the, the is the carrying on with the with the stance, which is the withdrawal of accommodation. Now, why this withdrawal of accommodation stance continued? 
one of the reasons probably was this um, you know withdrawal of the two thousand rupee notes, asking people to to uh, return the two thousand rupee notes so that more money. And as we speak, the uh, governor has in recent interview said that uh, two third of the loan of three point six trillion two thousand rupee worth of notes. You know, it's uh, it's a scumbag. So liquidity, when liquidity is back, if you Reserve Bank of India wants to continue with the withdrawal of accommodation, uh, uh, even though uh, there's not exactly uh, the unanimous or consensus decision on this. Uh, on the pause backroom, there is a consensus decision. And uh, I must say the key takeaway is, and which is very, uh, it's very heartening to see that Reserve Bank of India is not celebrating uh, the uh, drop in inflation because it is fully aware that the risk to inflation are still there, which is why the inflation for the year, uh, its its uh, assessment uh, projection for the current fiscal year has come down by just 10 basis points from 5.2 to 5.1. And RBI wants to see inflation at 4%. Which is which is actual the target? If you see the flexible inflation targeting of Reserve Bank of India is four percent plus minus two percentage point, which is in two to six percent. Now, uh, in the past uh, three years, I would say um, there was a general feeling that RBI is wavering from this four percent uh, inflation target. And if it's happy, if it's five percent or five percent plus, and there are so many months, it's gone beyond six percent. Uh, which is the upper end, uh, upper end of the bank. But now RBI has made it very clear, uh, and in the MPC minutes also, it's pretty clear. And uh, subsequently, RBI governors interview um, in the media space is this: Look, uh, our inflation target is four percent. So what does it mean? A RBI has not changed its inflation target, which many were like a little bit apprehensive that RBI would be happy even if its inflation is. Um, on the higher side, but less than 6%. That's not the case. RBI is sticking to this 4% inflation target. And second is we can't expect no um, policy rate cut too soon because unless RBI is absolutely sure is on the top of it and it has been able to bottle the inflation genie, uh, RBI will not go for any uh, rate cut. Lots of uh, important takeaways uh, from our chat today, Tamal, whether it is the whole retail lending situation uh, due to the rising lending rate, uh, as well as the aggressiveness of banks. And uh, yes, indeed, heartening to know that, CB, uh, that RBI is not yet celebrating the uh, decrease in inflation. And uh, as you said, that it is not expected to rate, cut the rate anytime soon, which you have said in the past as well. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Tamal, for joining us today. And we will be uh, chatting with you again next week. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. That led success so high I will achieve I will fly high I am the eye In SBI I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank SBI I The banker to every Indian